Welcome back everyone to Trails in the Sky the Third. We are currently in Chapter 5, The Luminous Labyrinth. In the last episode we explored the first part of that plane and we actually unlocked Alan Richard! Which I'm really excited about. Um, so in this one we are going to very quickly talk to my other party members and then continue on with the labyrinth. Tell me something interesting about Annalise. Apparently she fought our buddy Colonel Richard here a while back. Whoa, really? We actually saw that. Yeah, it's true. I wasn't expecting it to happen though, but it was just a friendly bout, so don't take it too seriously. Huh, never would have guessed. I mean, I've fought him once before too, but it's still weird. Yeah, but that fight was four against one, and even then we barely scraped by with a victory. Well, you know someone's going to be tough when your old man's the one who trained him with a sword. I'd be down for a one-on-one -on -one fight against him if he is. Hell, maybe I should go ask him now. I don't think you could take him. He just said she was feeling a little tired, you see. So I'm currently in the process of lulling her into a peaceful slumber with my sweet nothings. This just feels like a crime in the making. Yes, it does. Having the faintest clue what you are all accusing me of. I always put the ladies in my life above all else. Yeah, that's exactly the problem. Aw, looks like she's having a little nap. She was the first person we released from the ceiling stone, incidentally. She must be exhausted. I think we should let her rest then. And Zin's just chilling over by the pillar. Man, I sure wasn't expecting Colonel Richard of all guys to be in a ceiling stone. At this rate, it'll be Master Cassius in the next one. Hold up a sec. I ended up here despite being in Calvert, so maybe she could even end up here. Aw, he wants Kilika. It's cute. So many characters in this game. So many. You were blessed with bombastic boobs. Doesn't mean you gotta go showing them off 24-7. That's super awkward, because Shira looks at him like a little brother. I cannot believe she just said Shira had bombastic boobs. <laughs> I I can't comprehend that. It's like Annalise calling him a baller. <laughs> what even is this game right now? He doesn't sound like the kind of man I would want as an enemy. He is not. Both General Morgan and Brigadier General Bright did their best to stop Richard from leaving the army when he made his decision to do so. No one denies that he made a mistake. But he was an exceptionally skilled soldier and the military is worse off without him. I've heard rumors that Brigadier General Bright hasn't given up on bringing him back into the ranks yet. That sounds just like something he would do. Yeah, he's never been one for giving people a break. Very true. why it's RNA because it's Richard and Amalthea somehow I can't picture her sitting behind a desk doing normal people's work <laughs> she's also changed since the coup we've been living a rather relaxed life since our new business began 
can believe it, you've got this whole different aura about you now. Maybe this was actually the right career choice for you after all. <laughs> Did that entire conversation flat right over her head? You will always be a colonel. I don't care if you left the army. You are Colonel Richard to the core. You will never be anybody else. I don't know if that was all my people or not. I have too many of them. I think that was all of them. I think that was all 15, 15, 16, however many I have now. Recipes of I unlock now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I'm halfway there. <laughs> so I think I need to do twenty. Get into that door. And start eating more food, I guess. I don't know why I attacked with her. That was dumb. <laughs> I usually don't need them, and I always forget to use them. Morality sword. Is that actually like a sword sword? No. Was it ingredient? I have no idea what it was. Clicked through it too quickly, I think. Oh no, it is actually a sword. It was weird, I got it from a battle. That's really good. You don't usually get weapons from battles. Not random ones at least. Normal, hard, nightmare, other nightmare. No, thank you. I will pass.
Okay. It's turning into more of a labyrinth, that's for sure. I don't think I have anything else that gets rid of Confuse. Confused, I think. Friends confuse? That's surprising. I don't have any accessories that prevent confuse. There was a bunch of that previous map that I didn't do, so I still have to go back to that. was really cool looking. I got a bit of a chesty cough. Oof. Some of these puns are ridiculous. Okay, so I cannot continue farther on this one. Which means I have to go back to that other screen and walk around to the other portal. Oh, there's a door here, though. Present the card that governs fate. Pretty sure I don't have that one yet. Just a hunch. not anything else up on this half, but I just want to make sure. No, okay. I know I don't have hands, but I want to hold yours. That's either really sweet or really creepy. Ugh.
Okay, so does that mean she has seal? I don't know what that one is. I've never looked into the status ailments. I know I should have, like a very long time ago, to actually know what each of them means, but I didn't. An educated guess is the one that gets rid of attacks and crafts is seal, and the one that gets rid of magic is mute. Sorry, I just punched my desk. Does that one prevent confuse? I think it does. Lily necklace? Yes. Okay. Um, so we don't want to give that to. Start with Estelle, I guess. Oh, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I sometimes just absentmindedly attack with Chloe, and then I remember Chloe doesn't attack. Glad he wasn't paying attention. Oh, destiny card. Okay. That is what will get me into the previous store. But it is also... an accessory. So I'm guessing whoever... goes to the door has to be wearing this. Stuff blows. Okay. This is gonna have a chest at the end. It's got to. I don't want to fight another one of you. And a sword. And that is nonsense. I'm not sure whose sword that was. Not yours. Not yours. Oh, okay. That's for Agate. It's the broadsword. Treasure chest was supposed to have a witty say, but we drew a blue block. <laughs> blank, blue blank. <laughs> These puns are horrible. I don't want to fight any more of you. 
I really do not. What is that? Oh. What in the world? Pater Mater? Oh, no! Am I actually gonna get Ren? I feel like I saw that in the Lakeside Laboratory Ouroboros was using. Looks to me like a large archaism used by Ouroboros. Your reactions say there's more to it than that, however. You could say that, yeah. Let's go get that stone. After all this time, we finally found you. You must have spent a long while looking for the person inside. Then we shouldn't keep you waiting any longer. Let's hurry back to the garden and release them right away. Yeah, thanks, Reese. Do I actually get Ren? If it's not, I'm gonna be so mad. Oh, <laughs> I did not see him back there. That spider was completely hidden. I thought the battle was already over. Have you seen those chests from Erebonia? They're the strong, silent type. I don't want to fight you. I don't know why I'm actually walking all the way back. There's no reason to. No reason whatsoever. It is her! I can't believe it. It really is Ren. Looks like she's fast asleep. Oh, so heartbreaking. And of course they do the sad music. Because of course. Where am I? Oh, this is just a dream. Estelle? Joshua and Tita, too? What a nice dream this is. Friend. Oh, silly Estelle. You're supposed to be older than me. You shouldn't be acting like a clingy child. You're so warm, though. And you smell so nice. It's almost like this isn't a dream at... What's going on? Ren, this... what are you doing here? No, never mind that. Excuse me. What am I doing here? It's okay, Ren. I'm going to explain now, so try and stay calm, okay? You see, we're not sure how it happened either, but don't come any closer. If you take another step towards me, I will kill you! I'll try and handle this, Estelle. Do you mind taking a step back? I'm happy to see you again, Ren. How have you been all this time? How is that any of your business? You're just as bad as Estelle is, Joshua. Why would you two leave me alone and stop following me around? I figured you must have noticed. You're right. For the past few months, we've been traveling around trying to find you. We're in Crossbell at the moment, too. Are we getting warmer? You're in Crossbell? Why? Why do you want to find me so much? We just want a chance to talk with you. We heard from a reliable source that you haven't been back to Ouroboros since we last fought. Is that true? What's that got to do with either of you? 
All I want is to be left alone. I don't want to talk to either of you. I don't even want to see you. So why would you just leave me be? Because. Sorry, Ren. This one's on me. Ever since you flew off, I haven't been able to get you off my mind. I've been getting Joshua to look into where you might be, and we've been going around chasing down every possible lead. But that's why I'm so happy to finally be able to see you again like this. But... but... Oh, I get it now. You're lying, aren't you? Really, all of that's just a cover for the fact that you're trying to capture me. What? Sorry to disappoint you, but I only know about as much as Joshua does about Ouroboros. Even if you catch me, you're not going to get anything useful out of me. And even if I did know lots of dirty secrets, I wouldn't tell you. I bet you feel really stupid for wasting your time now. W wait a second, that's not... Or are you going to try your luck anyway? You've sure brought a lot of familiar faces for backup. Even I might have trouble taking on this many people at once. But I'm confident I'll leave at least a few of you headless before I end up beaten. Well, I think I know who you are now. Orboros Enforcer number 15, the Angel of Slaughter, correct? You certainly do know me. I don't know you, though. Are you a knight of the church? Yes, I'm Reese Argent, a squire. And while I may not be very familiar with your circumstances, would it hurt you to behave less like a self-centered child? Excuse me? Did you call me a self-centered child? From what I've heard, your intelligence and deductive reasoning have few peers. That led you to joining Ouroboros, obtaining both the current rank and abilities you now have. So unless I'm wrong, I find it very hard to believe you haven't already figured out that this isn't a trap we've set to capture you. And yet you still expect us to waste our time and humor your little temper tantrum? So yes, I did call you a self-centered child. Um, Reese? Yeah, she sure doesn't miss words. My, you're a brave one, aren't you, miss? Did I hear a lowly squire like you trying to provoke an enforcer like me? You must really want to end up splattered all over the floor. I could say the same to you. I have no idea why everyone else here regards you favorably, but I, for one, have no interest in being friends with someone from Ouroboros. So if that is what you want, I will be more than happy to oblige. Oh no. Reese? A Templar sword, huh? Those can certainly be a rude awakening in the right hands. Of course, everyone else who's ever tried to challenge me with one ended up being quite predictable after a while. Before long, they were all begging me for mercy like pigs about to be slaughtered. It was ever so pitiful. I can't wait to hear you do the same. Ren? No! Do you actually want to fight? Or do you only intend to stand around trying to sound threatening? I suppose that is enough talking. Come on, you two! Both of you, stop it! Tita? Hey, wait a sec. Why are the two of you so desperate to try and fight when you know you don't really want to? Ren, you were trying to make it sound like you don't care about Estelle and Joshua, but deep down, you're happy to see them again, and you know it. And Reese, you've already realized that Ren's not actually a bad person. It doesn't matter that she's from Ouroboros. Well, I'm happy? Of course I'm not. Why would I possibly be- Then why did you look so happy when Estelle hugged you? Right up until the moment you realized this was all real, you were acting like it was the best dream you'd ever had. And now you're saying you don't want to talk to them? That you don't want to see them? But hold on a minute, Tita. That's not true at all. That's not true at all, so just admit it. Oh, she made Tita cry. I swear, she just cut my life short about ten years. What the hell was she thinking? Look at you. Honestly, I thought you were a year older than me, you know? Yet here you are, crying away. You're not setting a very good example. I can't help it. What am I supposed to do when you guys finally see each other again and all you do is end up fighting? That's just too sad. Oh, she broke Tita. <laughs> hey. What are you crying for? Why did you have to? 
You know the answer to that already, Ren. It's because she likes you. She does? Hey, Ren. I know we've still got our differences, but how about we put all of that aside and call a truce for now? A truce? As I'm sure you can tell, we're in the middle of a really messy situation right now. And however you got here, you've ended up being dragged right into it with us. I'd say it's all in our best in all our best interests to work together, at least until we get out of here anyway. What do you say? That's certainly true. There's still plenty we don't know about our predicament. Having someone with your intellect on our side may well help us to fill then the remaining blanks. In fact, I would greatly welcome your assistance. Yeah, I'm with the colonel. I'm not a colonel, so... Regardless, I think it would be in your best interest to work with us, too. Cooperating will allow you to gather information more efficiently, as well as make it easier for you to ensure your own safety. That's true. It's obvious that wherever we are, it's somewhere abnormal. So it goes without saying that having me around would be a big help to all of you. Alright, out of respect for Tita's bravery, I'll spare you all this time. Fill me in on exactly what's going on here. Thanks, Ren. Just so we're clear, I haven't decided whether I'm going to work with you or not yet. All I'm promising is to listen to your explanation of what's happening. Then I'll decide if I'll help. I see. I think I've got a pretty good idea what's going on now. Whoever chose this place's name couldn't have picked a better one, could they? What? Have you figured something out that we hadn't? Possibly. I'm still not completely certain yet. But I'm relatively confident in my theory after hearing the colonel's story, though. Me? <laughs> my own experience was the same as everyone else's, ending up here after being surrounded by a sudden white light. But you say you weren't wearing your uniform when it happened to you, right, colonel? How many times must I- Well, whatever. I wasn't. As I explained to everyone when I first arrived, I was wearing a shirt and slacks as I do every other day at work. Right, just checking. So then, tell me something. Would you say you have quite a strong emotional attachment to that uniform? Pardon? Oh, that's a definite yes. It's a symbol of your past. The past you just can't quite move on from, even though you need to. Am I right? Yes, you are. It's no surprise you feel that way from my perspective. And lo and behold, the moment you appeared in this world, you were wearing that very same uniform again. Whatever do you think that could mean? That would mean when I arrived here, my attachment to the past ended up being manifested as reality. In other words, this world is capable of changing based on people's thoughts. Uh, now it makes sense. Not to me it doesn't. Can you explain in slightly less complicated terms for the rest of us? It's actually a really simple thing. You remember how Luciola used a gospel to make you experience a dream, right? Right. The dreams we saw were different depending on what we wanted to see, too. Of course. Unlike that, this isn't a dream, but the concept is basically the same. Anyway, just like in Luciola's dream worlds, this world changes depending on what the people inside it want. It also happens to recreate places that exist in their memories, too. It all falls into place nicely once you simplify it, doesn't it? So it does. That explains the monuments we've encountered and how the doors work, too. Still, while that explanation may explain the contents of this world, I find it hard to believe that any of us would desire the predicament we've found ourselves in. Oh, I don't disagree. We're not the only ones here, though, are we? So, in other words, many of the contents of this world exist because of us, but its overall structure is the result of someone else within it? From what I can gather, yes. What exactly is making all of this possible is the part I'm still puzzling over. Making people's wishes reality was the purpose of the Oriole, but now that's been lost, and I can't think of anything else capable of doing the same. I think it's easy for all of us to point the finger at who wished for this world to behave the way it does, at the very least. The Lord of Phantasma. Exactly. Based on everything that's been said, they weren't in this world originally. That was just the ghost you've encountered. Until the Lord of Phantasma, she simply watched over this place from this garden here. But then they showed up, stole her power, and started remaking the world according to their own whims. The result is what we're stuck in right now. Well, what do you think? Wow. Damn. 
feels like you just popped your head in and solved all these crazy mysteries like they were nothing. <laughs> That's certainly impressive. Even I hadn't been able to deduce quite that much. You really are a genius, Ren. I'm sure you could have worked this much out if you'd really put your mind to it, Joshua. Unless Estelle's stupidity is actually contagious and rubbed off on you. Well, that's not very nice. I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Either way, it sounds like this Lord of Phantasma person likes games just as much as I do. And without me, I don't know if you'll be able to beat them. So I suppose I'd, let a, I'd better lend you all a hand. I hope you're all very grateful. Uh, yeah, sure. It's nice to have a cutie like you on board, Ren. Well, now that that's settled, it's time to use that cube to take us back to the fifth plane so we can move on. Now that we've gotten closer to working out what's going on, we should be able to move on to the next part of the game board now. I'm guessing our opponent's ready to make their next move too. Someone's confident. Still, have it your way. It's not as though we have any other option than to press on. I'm expecting we'll encounter a devil at the end of this plane, just like we have at all of the others. We should only move on when we're sure we can handle it. Aw, I could really do without the extra trouble. Then again, I'm kind of curious what these devils are like in reality. Would you like to come and have a look with me, Tita? I I'm not sure just the two of us going would be such a good idea. Aw. She was so opposed to being with us earlier, but look at her now. Yeah, I'm really glad she came around. Hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to her while we're in here too. Yeah. I got Ren! <laughs> That's so exciting. Okay, we are going to end this episode here. And the next one we will continue on. I think I'm going to... And I might do this off stream, but I think I'm going to swap out Annalise for Ren. And then I might run around the beginning part of the labyrinth first to see if I like her playstyle before I actually try to do a devil with her. <laughs> I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'll stream that part or not. We'll see. I don't know how I'm feeling about that yet. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.